Okay, folks. We are so back. We are back. Um, so, what they said in this book was kind of life-changing. Whoever begins a specific conversation should be the one to set the pace for the conversation. And what that means is that if your husband comes to you and starts a conversation, then he sets the pace and you're going to stay, you're going to listen to him and you're going to help problem solve with him and you're going to stay in one box. You're going to stay with that topic. Uh, that topic. Mm -hmm. But if um, the woman, so this is important for the men. Here we go. If the woman starts the conversation, then men, you need to be understanding and realize you don't have to solve everything. You just have to listen to her and go through the process with her. Right. And he actually, uh, both the couple that wrote this, um, they have some really good information on, on what the men need to do in order to have great conversation and right. how that can win over your wife and, and how she will think you are the hero and yep. you didn't do anything but listen. And then uh, wives, there's some really great um, information on what you need to do. So going to on, um, I have some highlighted, um, on the men on page 30, it says, men, to help you understand your wife's need to finish a conversation, imagine if everything in your life ended early. So she needs to finish a conversation. And remember when we were reading through this, uh, what were some of the things? It's like, imagine if you were watching a TV show. And someone turned it off halfway through. Or right at the climax. Yeah. Or if you were having an intimate experience and it ended before the climax. Or if you were watching a sports TV and it finished. Or you were doing a project. And or somebody shut it off before you got to see the end of the game. Yeah. Right. And, uh, or if, you know, you were doing a project and you had to put it up and not be able to finish it. And you only got three quarters of it done and you didn't finish the project, you'd get frustrated. Yeah. So imagine, um, you know, that's what a woman feels like when she hasn't finished a conversation. And most women don't ever get to finish a conversation. Because right. the man's getting frustrated because we've opened so many boxes, he thinks he has to fix it all. And also, too, men get to the get to the place where they look at their wives and they say, "Is there a point to this? Is there a point to this conversation? Is this conversation going anywhere?" And what men fail to realize is, if they would just shut their mouths and let their wives talk and let them talk through what they're talking about. Not only, number one, you didn't solve a problem because there wasn't a problem to begin with. They just wanted someone to listen to them. And two, you'll be the hero because you actually listened to the end of her conversation. So that's two things. Yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's huge. It's very important. And, she, and it says even in here that she will feel like you're her best friend, that you really care about her. And that yeah, because you, you listened. Because yeah. you listened. Yeah, and that's you didn't have it, to solve any problems. Nope. So... That's if the wife is talking and, you know, you were like, you know what? She started a conversation. She wants to sit down and have just a, a conversation about anything and everything just to be with me. And once again, if women, if your man starts a conversation, his uh, their advice on page 31 is, ladies, when it's your husband's turn to talk, you need to practice staying in the box he wants to open. I like the the um, story towards the end of the book. Um, it talks about um, a husband. He was in his garage, and the wife didn't know how to relate to him. Or it was a fiance, right? Yeah. It was a guy and gal fiancés, and so the wife to be went into the garage. And just sat and listened to him talk about car parts and and exhaust and mm -hmm. suspension and stuff that really she could care less about. But at the end of it, he looked at her and told her how appreciative he was that she listened to him talk about, you know, yeah. the car that he's working on. He was one of those guys that get a different hot rod and fix it up or a different car and fix it up into a hot rod or whatever. But she didn't know how to get to his communication style, but she just went in there and listened. And he talked to her about cars. 
and it didn't really do anything for her, but it was monumental for him because it was him talking to his future wife about something that he was passionate about. And it went a long way and it made it so much better. And then she went back to the counselor she was going to and she told the counselor, I've learned that I'm going to be in the garage a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where he's always at. But that doesn't mean that they still can't carry on conversations, especially now that she just showed him that it was important to him that she listened and she did. Mm -hmm. Well, and we've told this story many times. Um, when Jay and I first met, the reason why we connected so much is that um, we had gone to Pizza Hut and um, we were actually not officially on a date as boyfriend, girlfriend, we were more um, just friends at that point. Mm -hmm. But we sat across the table and Jay listened to everything I had to say. I listened to everything he had to say. We were connected with that listening. And I just remember he was the first guy who ever listened to me. And that's what really connected us. Right. Mm -hmm. And not just listen on the surface, like... No, Listen was, to my soul. It was deep conversation. I mean, for somebody who just met somebody, it was actually insane. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. it was like a deeper level of a, of a conversation that you would have probably with a boyfriend or a girlfriend like a year on down the relationship. And it was the first time that we had hung out. Mm-hmm. And we talked about a lot of different things of what do you want in life and what I wanted in life and where do you see yourself in five years and, you know, kind of what are you looking for in a in a future spouse. And yeah. I mean, it was like a really good conversation. And one of the hard really parts was. about uh, being married for so long is that conversation starts to die. You feel like you know everything. You right. feel like you've heard it all. Right. There are new things that you haven't even heard, and sometimes we come across those, you know, like, oh, I didn't, didn't even know that about you. Yeah. Um, so, don't give up conversation, mm -mm. and there might be new stuff in their life that they are thinking about or um, hurting through, you know, going through or whatever. Yeah. And so, I know for us, this chapter, as I was, as we were reading this this morning, I was like, huh. We've been kind of doing it wrong. No wonder we've been right. kind of a little frustrated in the communication department. Mm -hmm. And also realizing that there's two different kinds of conversations now. I never, I just thought if we're in the same room and we're talking, it's all the same conversation. We have to have, do the same skills. I never separated that there's a time when you initiate the conversation and we just talk about it the way you want to talk about it. There's a time when I initiate the conversation and I talk about what I need to talk about. And I need to just listen. Yeah, and being fair to take turns unless, on that. Unless she asked me a question, directly asked me a question, I need to shutty. Or and, and, kind of, and, you know, I well, mean... Well, they had reflective listening in there. and Correct, but I need to not... If you initiate the conversation, mm -hmm. I don't need to take over the conversation. Yeah, Anyways, we got some really good stuff. You have got yeah. to read this chapter, it's, guys. It's a great book, and it's a good chapter. Yeah, I'm going to end on this amazing, um, this amazing quote that they did from the book at the end. It says, Our experience has taught me that happiness and passion in marriage do not come from finding the right partner, but being the right partner. Yep. Are you the right partner? Are you doing everything you can to become that right partner and give your spouse what they need. Um, it's so much better if you can, you know, start just concentrating on what you can do to improve your conversation for your spouse. Yeah, are you are you willing to, to work on your communication skills or are you just going to stick to the status quo of, well, I've done it this way all my life, I'm not going to change. I mean, you know, everything... Everything changes. Mm -hmm. Everything's constantly changing. So, yeah, whether it's your job or your home life, or you all of a sudden you have kids, or you don't have kids, or whatever, there's always something that's going to change. So you got to be willing to 
step up your communication game. Mm -hmm. And this week, I think we're going to try some of this yep. communication. We'll tell you uh, how we're doing next in one of our next coffee times. Yep. But for now, this is Jay and Krista. Say I do forever. Say I do forever. And we wish you well. Have a great week. We'll see you next Friday. We will try to make it on Friday the yeah. next time <laughs> for Chapter 3. <laughs> yes. Indeedy. Okay. See you guys. See ya.